Hi there, Elliot here at Bover Trope Fitters, and today we're going to tie a nice simple streamer. Uh, of course, we're going to start with a number four stinger and olive flat wax nylon because every streamer I tie tends to be an olive. So we're going to get a nice base of thread here. And then I normally tie this without any weight, but today I want to get it down deep here in winter, so I'm going to use some simple lead dumbbell eyes for this. Now, it's important to really lash these dumbbell eyes to the underside of the hook in this case. I don't want these to be able to shift position on me and cause the fly to keel uh, off center. So once we get those in place, we're going to take a black barred rabbit strip here. Don't worry about uh, separating the fibers or anything. I want the tail to extend, you know, at least the length of the hook beyond the bend and that's going to give it some movement and it's going to give it some body more importantly. So we're just going to lash that down. So once we have our rabbit strip secured to the hook, we're going to actually, we're going to put a few wraps behind. Uh, you know, this, this will help it from fouling, not that you have to really worry about that in this case. Next we're going to get some uh, UV dyed polar chenille in olive and we're going to secure that just in front of the rabbit strip from where it's tied down. Now the polar chenille is going to act as, you know, of course for some flash, but what it's going to do is act as a bit of a prop for the next material which we're going to place in front of it, the marabou, and it's just going to help give it that, again, a little bit more body. You know, a great thing about this dyed UV polar chenille is that it's, it's an easy way to add flash to a fly and it's, it adds body. It's very easy to, easy to use, just make sure you pull those fibers back so that they're not being trapped underneath one another. Next we go to our blood quill marabou feather here. I'm just going to tie it in at the tip right, right in front of that polar chenille and once I get it secured down just that extra little bit of marabou I'm going to tuck that back on the dorsal side of the fly. You know, again it gives it a little bit extra silhouette and waste not want not. So once we get this secured in then we're going to take our hackle pliers, attach them and we're going to palmer this marabou feather forward. Be careful to keep all of those uh, fibers pointed backwards and again we're going to try and wrap it on with the concave portion of the feather facing the rear of the fly. You can wet your hands to do this. I like to just constantly pull them back while I'm palmering. So while I'm just using a, a plain olive uh, marabou feather here, you know, you could absolutely use uh, black barred marabou or UV, or if you're so inclined, you could make a few wraps of uh, different colored marabou feathers. But uh, for me, I like to keep it simple. Uh, I, I like to keep it olive, obviously. So uh, uh, the more shades, the better. And the, the marabou, again, is going to give this fly a lot of movement, even in slack water. So while I am using a whole blood quill uh, marabou feather here, I'm going to wrap it forward, palmering those, those fibers back, but I want to stop, you know, about an eighth of an inch behind the eyes. I'm going to secure that down, and I will need to leave a little bit of room because we're going to do a dubbing loop for our head. So I'm going to secure that down, make sure you really get it secure, and uh, once we, we make sure that that feather is nice and it has that nice umbrella kind of look around it, I'm going to invert this fly, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of those uh, fibers of the, of the marabou feather from the underside of the fly and I'm going to trim those off. Now the reason why I do that is I don't want that material interfering with the, the bend of the hook. It's not that they're going to impede a hook set or anything like that, it's just that they're going to basically foul and, and look unsightly once they get stuck in the bend of the hook. So this is more about streamlining and just adding to the uh, sculpiny kind of silhouette of this fly. So I don't want to cut any of my UV uh, polar chenille. All I want to do is cut the, uh, the marabou from the underside of the fly. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started on our dubbing loop here. I like to twist my dubbing loop and put my uh, bobbin through it so that I get this nice fine point at the top of the dubbing loop. I'll go ahead and you know, figure eight around the eyes again and then leave my thread at the front of the fly. I've made this dubbing blend out of uh, darker and, and lighter golden olive plus I like to mix uh, some synthetic flash in there. In this case it's a spectra dubbing. So I'm going to go ahead and put a bunch of that in my dubbing loop and uh, I'm going to spin it up, making sure that I try to get as much distance on either side of the loop as possible with those materials because I like it to have that real buggy look and it adds to the, uh, the, 
not the bulk of the head, but just basically the, the silhouette. I don't want it to taper too badly from, from front to back. So now that I comb this out, you know, you always put more material in a dubbing loop than you're going to use because you do comb it out. And so I'm going to get a few wraps of this dubbing loop behind our lead eyes here. Sorry, just a false start there. Wrap it a few times. And then once you get to the eyes, now you're going to figure eight around them. And uh, once you're satisfied that you have an even coverage, you know, on the top and the ventral side of that fly, a couple wraps in front of the eyes. Now I'm just going to secure it with the thread here, make sure that it's not going to come undone on me once I, once I snip the, uh, the dubbing loop off. So now once we've removed our dubbing loop, we're going to go ahead and whip finish uh, in front of the eyes here. Now, you know, it might look like the body of this fly is rather large in terms of its silhouette, but uh, when this slicks down in the water, actually the head will look a little bit larger than the taper of the body. You know, one important thing is to always have a dubbing comb or a dubbing brush so that you can really comb out those dubbing loops and, and give it that nice, nice buggy look to it. Uh, I like to, you know, make sure that I, I secure all my materials and comb them out so that I get the impression of the silhouette it's going to give and in the water. Now, while we do like to tie a lot of articulated streamers and certainly fish them on the bow here, they catch big fish, but sometimes the fish want something just a little bit smaller. Flies like these are really easy to cast, whether you're using a single hand or a two hander. Perfect fly for the bow at many times. Check us out here at BoardRetroFitters.com. All these materials are available in store.